live from Father's Arms Fellowship. How are you this morning? Sunday that the Lord has given us today. And you leave it? I love you. It is so great to be in the house of the Lord. We've got some new faces here this morning. Thank you all for coming. Um, I hope we don't scare you because sometimes we are worse. Um, and so, yeah, like that one back there. That one you really got to watch. Uh, oh, praise the Lord. All right, let's get some announcements out of the way. We'll, we will begin our worship service this morning. All right, uh, PK is going to continue uh, our Identity in Christ uh, series this morning. And then tonight, I'm back behind uh, the desk, and we're going to be uh, talking about Moses and uh, how, God, how God provided for them and how he provides for us during disappointment. And so that will be at 5.30 this evening. Uh, bring something to eat and uh, bring some goodies and, and bring something to eat, and it will be awesome. And um, we just have a great time. And then at uh, at uh, three o'clock this afternoon, those of you that are going to go with the soul winning class with Brother Dave, who we, who is back, and I'm glad you're back. And uh, after after a uh, after a scary and most unusual situation for our brother, he is back this morning. He'll be him and his team will be taking those who want to go out soul winning this afternoon at three o'clock. And uh, it's awesome, and we are seeing they are seeing some results, brother, and uh, and so we do pray that the field uh, will be open and uh, that God will do some awesome things. All right, and then so and then the, our ladies' Bible study, Pastor Nancy will be bringing at Tuesday at ten, and uh, that's going very well. And then uh, Wednesday evening Bible study at five thirty, brother Dave, uh, he uh, him or. Uh, Brother Bill will be bringing that, and uh, that one is not on Facebook. Everything else is on Facebook for those of you that want to see. It will also be on YouTube. Uh, that is a more intimate event, and so uh, if you want, uh, if you want to come to that and you need something for, to, you know, for the group to pray about, that is your social circle that you can uh, share what's on your heart without it getting out and about. Okay. Uh, we're stopping the gossip chain right where it's at. So that's at five thirty on the on Wednesday, and of course AA is right after that uh, at seven thirty. And Thursday, of course, is prayer at two o'clock. Uh, and around I don't know, around ten o'clock, you'll get a ping saying, "Hey, we're praying today." And if you have any requests, just send that right back on your text. Only Pastor King gets it, and trust me, it does get prayed for. And if you are not on that text list, um, the instructions on how to do that are in a bulletin, and we've got plenty of those over there. And for some reason, you can't get all that. All you have to do is just uh, call Pastor Ken and Pastor Nancy, and they will tell you and walk you through the steps to get on that program. And you can get on the daily promise list. We're about 9.45 every day. You'll get a daily promise. Those are awesome. And then, of course, anything that would go on, like an emergency status or all that, all Pastor Ken has to do is send it to the... The people that send it out, and then you will get it just like that. And hey, it's fast and efficient. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. All right. Hey, we got some stuff coming up very quickly. I think that's what, in two weeks? Um, Brother Kirk Devaney is going to be here for both morning and evening services. And uh, if you've ever heard him speak, he is a missionary in Guatemala, and he's going to be bringing uh, coffee uh, to, for us to buy. And the, the funds that he gives from that, it helps the mission that he has down there in Guatemala. So um, we'll also be doing a special offering, I'm sure, uh, to, to send him on his way uh, back down to Guatemala where there's some really awesome things going on down there. And so kind of keep that up. All right. And then on November 13th, we're going to have a bluegrass Thanksgiving with Jamie Brown and the Ch uh, Chestnut Mountain Gang. Um, and so that's going to be an awesome experience, too, coming down the road. 
And then, of course, uh, in our bulletin, uh, Pastor Ken is going to go to the Winter Bible Study at Brayman there in Tulsa. Uh, the information's on there. Uh, you can just talk to him privately, and then he will tell you if you really want to go, and he'll tell you what it's going to cost you and what you got to do. So um, it's going to be awesome. Hey, we got a lot of things going on here at Father John's Fellowship. And uh, more and more people are coming. Praise God. And uh, we just, what a, what a, God is so good and He's doing so many wonderful things here. Amen. And, uh, and i got to tell you, um, He's starting to branch us out a little bit. And uh, don't be afraid of that. Um, because, because what God foreordains, He's going to take care of and He's going to provide and He's going to go in front of us and it's just going to be awesome. Amen. And so uh, just kind of keep that in mind. So, I believe that is all of our announcements. So, the big question is, who's ready to worship? All right. All right. Do me a favor. Everybody take a deep breath. So, guess what? That proves you are alive. Amen. Amen. And that breath was foreordained by God. Amen. And so if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Right? So. Brother Greg? Yeah. Aren't we blessed to build and live in a country that we can praise the Lord without fear of reprisal? We are blessed. We are very we are blessed. We that today, you know? Well, we are. Yeah, let's do it. So let's worship. Yeah, yeah. But let me pray first. No. <laughs> Greg, I have, I have a praise report. All right, hit it. I have, I have a praise report. Yesterday... I went to an early lunch with Pastor and Michael and Pastor Gary. And we just did our normal thing, sitting there talking and whatever. We were leaving. And a lady stopped Michael and I and said, it was so refreshing to hear men sitting at a table talking about God. So, and that, that just reminds me of this phrase that I've always heard and grasped onto. It says... Uh, Preach the word of God at all times. Amen. And Amen. when you need to, use words. Yes. There you go. Man, that's awesome. Awesome. That is awesome. <coughs> they are watching. They are watching. All right. Well, let us go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will begin our worship. Father, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, who... It's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Tau, the Alpha and the Omega. The creator of all things, Lord, the lover of our souls. Yes, Lord. The one who died to give us life and life more abundantly, Amen. to forgive us of our sins, yeah. and to keep us in righteousness and right standing with you. We praise your name, thanking you, first of all, for the forgiveness of our sin by your death on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you did that. Thank you for guiding us every day if we would only listen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us your word. Thank you for being over us. Thank you for giving us that breath. Thank you for that awesome testimony. Thank you for just being who you are. Amen. This morning, Lord, the world seems crazy, but here we are together as family to worship you. So I ask you, Heavenly Father, that the things that are trying to drive us crazy that you would just put a, uh, a wall in front of us like you did there in Egypt, yes, like, Egypt, like you did with that cloud. And so let us just focus on you for the next couple of hours, Lord. Yes, I ask you that you would anoint the praise team, Heavenly Father, and that the music that they play would not only glorify you, but it would bring the spirit of worship for us. Amen. Thank you, Father, for all the answered prayers. Thank you for watching over us and protecting us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Pastor Ken, you got the mic. Are you going to say something? I'm going to sing with you. Oh, good. Perfect. Well, everybody, please stand up if you can. And let's get our bodies active in this worship, not just our voices, if you can. If you're able, right? Everything Woo! with half breath. And praise Woo! the Lord. So if you're catching your breath, you, you got an out for a second. And then let's get back to it. Uh -huh. Let's sing mighty God. 
Yeah. What yeah. is causing yeah. this in the back? Lord, let the healing come. Yes, God, Lord, even in the back, Lord, wherever this is coming from, let it be reversed. In the sciatic nerve, Lord, wherever it's coming from. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you. Wherever it's coming from, Lord, let the healing come. In Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus.
to Amen. give your life to Jesus. If you're here and you're unsure of your salvation, do you know it's important to know that you have confidence that you're saved? Amen. Yes. We call it, we Baptists call it assurance of salvation. Amen. <laughs> well, some of you might need some assurance Amen. that you're Amen. saved. Amen. And if you're not sure, I'm going to give an altar call right now, and I want you to come up to this altar. And some of us are going to, we're going to pray over you, help you, just help pray you through that. Help pray you through that. If you're not 100% sure, if you're wandering, as they sing this, and you all just find your way at the altar. Find your way to the altar, and I'm going to find my way to you. Go ahead and sing that song. As they sing this, if you need assurance of your salvation, I want you to come up and sit on the altar, kneel at the altar, whatever you want to do. And we're, some of us are going to find our way to you. Amen. We're going to find our way to you. And help you. We're going to help you. Brother Dave, come up here. Pray with this precious young couple right here. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name. If you're not 100% sure you're saved, you need to know. You need to know. <laughs> precious, precious Jesus. <laughs> Come on up here, Greg. Help some of these. Help, help my brother here. Pray with my brother. Brother Greg. I'll be there in a second. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Michael Dale, get down here and pray for some of these people. Go and pray for this young couple over here on the end. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The greatest thing that you can ever do is to know 100% that you're saved. The greatest thing that you can ever do is to know 100% that you're saved. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is here. <laughs> Holy Spirit is here. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Come up here and help me pray with my brother right here. Facebook, 
and there's some all around. I, if you need to cry out to the Lord, now is the time. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Whatever it is, you may be saved and you know you may be saved, but there's something inside of you that's inside a middle block. Today, that block can be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Many of us just need to have the, the joy of our salvation filled. Now is your time. In Jesus' precious name. Oh, 
to take that home. They got you over there, Sue, over there in that corner, over there. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm going to have our brother, uh, while he's doing that, I'm going to have Brother Dave uh, Daniel come. At 3 o'clock this afternoon, they're going to continue with their class. But he's got his friend here, Eric, with him. And I think they're going to share just a little bit about the class and about their experience with learning how to... Uh, Eric's going to share uh, about, uh, a little bit about his experience with that. Yes. And is uh, is our Chinese buddy here yet? He's not going to make it. He's not going to make it today. Okay, here you go, brother. All right. This is my friend, Eric McIntyre. Now, he may not look like it, but... See, see, I told you all he had a friend. What? <laughs> <laughs> He may not look like it, but he was a bull rider in his 20s. He traveled the country riding bulls. He won bulls, he, he won the rides, and he sent his money home to his wife. And uh, many, many rides that he took. He came one ride to become a pro. Tell him about that last ride, Eric. That's okay, you got it. <laughs> well, it was y'all want to hear about that, do you? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I was inside the chute, and the way you, I don't know if you want to ride the bulls around here or not. There you go. Uh, had my hand in it, and I was watching the hump, that's what I always did. Got in there, and I was watching that hump turn. All of a sudden, she switched on me, and I've already had my weight on the other side because it went that way. But she turned around, threw me off, seven seconds. Had one second to go, and I, I lost that ride. So that's the way it goes. He would have made pro if he had made one more second. Wow. But the Lord has another plan for this man. And I'm going to tell you now, these preachers, and you, you guys have got a harder job than me riding bulls. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that now. Because we got, what I, we got a lot of bulls we're riding, brother. Because what I can, what because what I went through ain't nothing compared to a rodeo. But uh, no, anyway. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. One, so, tell him, tell him about his accident too. We know how we're all agreeing for his full healing. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna bring you up to speed. I'm gonna back up there. His, he had an accident. He was wanting to go on a mission trip. A mission trip. Bull riding is not too dangerous, right? <laughs> he wanted to go on a mission trip. Yeah, mission trips are dangerous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway, he was with the Baptist Church of Fruitland, Mike Perry. Some of you might know of him. And Mike Perry was driving, and they were down in Arkansas somewhere, headed to a, a place to go do a mission, please, yeah. Louisiana, and somebody come across and hit him head on. Mm. Oh, no. Now they came with a, a helicopter to get him, and they flew into Memphis. And he said, I can hear the emergency guy there on the ground. He's talking to the guy in the radio in the helicopter. Tell him what they said, Eric. Well, another one of my missions, I was a uh, volunteer fire department, so I knew, I knew a lot of the codes they were saying. The helicopter was asking the firefighter, do I need to go on or because they're all dead in the, the way it was hit? And I started screaming, I'm alive. I'm alive. And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they could hear me or not because everything was on me. I was stuck in it and it cut me out. But he, they finally heard me and the, the doctors, they, they finally landed and got me out. And, uh, I, don't, I don't remember a lot of it. Uh, I remember getting put on the helicopter. I've never been on a plane or nothing. So I asked the nurse, I said, is there anywhere I can see top of the building when you come in? And she said, look to your right while they have y'all stand down to just look to your eyes and I got to see Me uh, where was I at? Memphis. Memphis, uh, the building. So I got to see top of the buildings. But other than that, he, uh, everybody thought we was all dead and how it looked. And, uh, everybody, no one died, but uh, a lot of people wish they did. It was painful. But we made it through. It broke his neck. 
oh. and his collarbone. And so it, it, he's really been messed up. And so uh, I'm glad that we were here today that we could pray over him. Amen. Yes. Because uh, he needs prayer. We need, we need to keep praying for him. Yeah, I have a confession. Um, it's kind of embarrassing to say that uh, it swells. It, it gets swollen, and I'll forget where I'm at. But I'm finally driving now, but I'll pull over and have to call my wife and ask where I'm at. And she pretty much tells me, and then it comes all back to me. Uh, I can't tell time in certain days, so it just swells and it hits the, the deal. But because uh, we didn't want the, the surgery taking my skull off, piecing my skull off, so we didn't do that. But the uh, collarbone healed good, the shoulder's not working out very well, and the concussion's hanging on. Like, but my neck, I'm doing all right with the neck, I guess. Um, that's all happened. And you're in therapy, right? Yeah, I'll be in therapy for the next two years. Mm. So I go three hours a day, so. It's like going to the job. Yeah. You don't get paid. But you got to pay them. <laughs> the reason I wanted him to speak to you is that concerning if you're even have an inclination that you might want to share Jesus and you don't know how, you need to come at 3 o'clock. We're going to take you out and you can observe and you can get in the swing of it. Eric, how did we meet? Well, I was going to a church. Did I need this microphone? Yeah. Yeah. I'll hold it. Well, I'll let me know. <laughs> <laughs> was, I'm, I was going to Allenville Church, and uh, I, I didn't even thought of this. And uh, he was up there preaching and uh, about doing all this. And I was like, I'm not going to that. And uh, David and all of them, they was laughing. And uh, and after he got done with the service, I even told him, I said, I ain't going. He said, yeah, you are. I said, no, I'm not. And uh, I was sitting in my little group. I'm a little class clown. And uh, he said, you got ready? I said, I ain't going, but I told you. He said, yeah, you are. Well, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it was amazing how, how it worked with me because I had never done this. And I thought, well, I'll go with them and I'll hide out in the parking lot. But he kept his eyes on it like a hawk because I was going to disappear. But one of my buddies pulled up, and I knew he was a Christian. So I was like, yes. So I went over to him. and uh, But the, fr the friend of a friend was with him. And I knew him a little bit. I knew he wasn't saved. And uh, we talked to him. He got saved. And to this day, he's saved. Uh, but we were at Walmart, and this guy... Kept walking out to his car, back to his car, and the Holy Spirit told me to talk to him. I said, "I ain't doing that." <laughs> I said, "I said, Lord, forgive me." It, it, when the Lord, when the Holy Spirit talks to you, you know He's talking to you, and you get goosebumps and you start, mm -mm, "I ain't doing it." And uh, so he walked back to the car, forgot his receipt, walked back in there. And I said, whew, got, got out of that one, didn't I? And uh, here he comes again. And I kind of said, nope, I ain't doing it, Lord. And he forgot his ID. He walked back in to the store. And, uh, <laughs> so I said, well, I'm going to walk around this way. So when he comes, because I knew he had come out right away, I'm going to go walk around this way. And we don't see him. Well, he came out the other door, walked over him. I said, All right, Lord, I'm going to do it. I said, Now, Jesus, I'm going to do this, and you're going to have to help me, or I'm going to stop and walk off. I said, This poor guy's going to be confused. So I walked up to him, and I said, But I said, I've been told three times to pray for you, or ask you if you know where you're going to go if you die today. Or say the look at you like you at first, and then uh, he said, "Well, I don't know where I go. I guess go home." I, I said, "No, I mean he physically." And he said, "Well, I don't know." I said, "Well, five. I can change that in five seconds." And uh, I said, "Just gotta pray." And, uh, and we prayed. And he repented, uh, asked God into his heart, 
and I told them, I said, now we'll find a local church, and that was over with. I'm thinking, I'm done with this, I did my thing. I'm pretty psyched about it, but I mean, when a person, when the Holy Ghost comes to somebody, you get the feeling too, and you can see it on their face. I mean, you get up, like, whoo, you just get a gush of it. But I thought that was it. I felt good. I was, ooh, you know, I did my job. God's got me broke down on that. You know, I'm good up there. <laughs> and the next day, here they come again. <laughs> They're like, well, we're going out of the middle. I'm like, well, huh? okay. And, uh, and this is the one that really got me. I mean, I get teared up every one time I think of this. This was an old country boy, hillbilly, rough boy. He had guns and I told him, I said, we don't stop at this house. This guy's nuts. <laughs> I know. I said, he's nuts. And I said, I don't even want to knock on this door. And uh, well, we did. <laughs> I didn't mean, know this is to me. <laughs> he come out. He said, that you hurt? And I said, well, it ain't me, but I, I'm over here. <laughs> I said, they knock on your door. I said, I don't know. I didn't knock on your door, bud. But... And so I came up there and I said, he, uh, I talked to him a little bit. He said, no, I don't want no praying for me with my mom. He said, I want someone praying for my mom. I said, sure. I said, can you, I, is your mom here? She was, but he said she was. And uh, I said, well, can you pray, you know, pray with you to, to reach to your mom? Yeah. We started praying. And it was like the Holy Ghost was standing right here in my ear, telling me to pray for him. I said, Lord, you don't want to pray for him. And uh, they was in there praying. As they was praying for the God, for, for the grandma or his mom, I'm there arguing with the Holy Spirit. I'm like, you don't want to pray for him. Pray for him. I said, look, this guy's nuts. And I'm not getting whooped out of here in this yard. <laughs> but really, that's, that's the honest truth. I'm saying to the Holy Spirit. He's like, ask him in. And they kept praying. It was the longest prayer I ever heard in my life. And I was sitting there, I'm like, no, 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 no. And it was like he was right here in my ear talking to me. So after it was done, I said, bud, let me pray for you. I said, let's quit being silly. He said, well, I guess. I guess we're going to do it. And he repented. He got on his knees. And there again, when you do it, you feel it. You know it. Uh, if a person just doing it to just get out, of, you know, because you're loving them, and they just do it just to say they did it. Because when they when they say the prayer, if the Holy Spirit ain't there going through them, but you'll feel it. It'll come right through you too. You'll see their eyes. Their eyes are lit up. They're they're jumping up and down. They're happy as can be because they just felt it for the first time. And they're going to be excited. But I really, that's all I can remember. I don't know if there's any more. Oh, yeah. well, the other people got saved yesterday. We were together yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. We were together yesterday. And he said, I feel the Holy Spirit begging me here. <laughs> there was a lady over at the side there. So I, I pulled over and he got out. And he went over and led her to the Lord. <laughs> now this guy here had never led anybody to Jesus in the past. But once he saw it, he wanted to get involved. Oh, with yeah. It. And then after he got involved with it, uh, I don't know how many you've led to the Lord now, but you're getting up in some numbers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the Holy Spirit will speak to you once you just accept it. Say, okay, Lord, I'll do it. Just tell me who you want. Want me to do it to you. And He will. He'll point them out. And He'll speak in your ear. He'll tell you. And you get out and do it or you don't do it. I don't know if, you, if he gets mad at you, you don't do it because I argue with him a lot. I ain't do it. <laughs> I said, Lord, I wanted to be a rodeo man. I didn't want to do this. I'm not a, I'm not a preacher. <laughs> you know, that's what I always thought. I thought, I thought you had to be a man of God <laughs> preaching a, and a, a deal. And I, that's what I always thought. And then, Lord, you better got to be a preacher. I'm like, yeah, I think you do. I got one more question for yeah, you. Yeah. This is the question. When you was on the bull, what was you doing before you come out the chute? Praying to God. I did. 
I would always I say, God, forgive me for when I was uh, 14 and if I didn't even think then I forgot to repent for forgive me. We, I, we cover our bases inside that sheet. <laughs> Amen. Thank you guys so much. If you want to join the soul winning class at 3 o'clock, you can go out with them. They'll, they'll teach you a simple technique of just talking to people and, and invite them to Invite Jesus into their lives. Amen. It's, it's simple. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You just repent, call on the name of the Lord, and you'll be saved. Amen. You don't have to go through a big bunch of formulas. It's a simple, simple salvation. Amen. But you got to believe. And I'll tell you what. Every, I'd like to see every person in this church to be a soul winner. I've been winning souls since I was about 15, 14, 15 years old. And there's nothing more fun than seeing somebody give their life to Jesus. We want to let our children go to children's churches. We're going to get into the teaching of the Word. So all the children can follow Pastor Nancy to the children's church classroom. And uh, we're going to begin to get into our teaching this morning here in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord. Stretch your hand out towards our children. Father, bless our children as they go. Bless our teachers as they teach. Lord, all the days of their life, may they be surrounded with the favor of the Lord, the protection of the Lord. Protect them from the abuses of the world and of the dark world. Yes, In the name of Jesus, let the blood of the Lamb be around them. The seal of protection of the Holy Spirit be around every one of our children, Lord. And they all serve you all the days of their life. In Jesus' name. We claim it, we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Brother Dave, would you mind uh, having a prayer for me before I begin my teaching this morning? Brother Dave, David Brand. Oh. I wasn't sure. <laughs> well, you got more than one day around here, don't you? Yeah. opportunity to come here together to worship you, Thank you. to be in your presence, and your Holy Spirit, Lord, move in a corporate way, Lord, through our service. Ask Father to touch Pastor Ken today, to this message, let it be, I know it's from the heart, I pray that your Holy Spirit will make it alive in our soul and our spirit, Lord. Yes. I ask you to bless the witnessing class, uh, so many classes at 3 o'clock, that you will lead them to those who are searching for you, even if they don't even realize it. And that uh, uh, you will bless the evening service, Lord. And we just give you the praise for all you're doing today. Just be with Pastor Ken this morning and his message. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, if you have a Bible, I'm going to ask you to hold it up. If you don't have a Bible and your Bible's on your phone, I'm going to ask you to hold your home, uh, phone up. If you don't have, then if you have the Bible in your heart, I want you to lift up a hand. Everybody lift up something. Say, this is my Bible. I have what it says I have. I am what it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. In Jesus' name, I receive the Word of God into my mind, into my heart, and into my actions. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's such power in the Word of God. Such power in the Word of God. We have been teaching a series on uh, uh, I am what God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. Well, today, Daniel, bring my first picture up there. I want you to see that we're in a battle. And... Um, there's a picture of Jesus uh, arm wrestling with the, and the, well, well, we can start with that, but you got the arm wrestling picture of Jesus and Satan. There you go. <laughs> let, let me tell you, uh, yesterday morning, it was about three in the morning, I was awakened and scriptures began to just flow through my mind and I'm trying to sleep and I... I'm so similar to this young man that was talking to us here. Here, I, I argue with the Lord a lot. And I said, Lord, I am trying to sleep. 
<laughs> but it's a scripture is, is pouring into me. And um, so this morning, uh, of course, I have uh, my sermons laid out for the next three or four months already. And um, uh, but so this morning I got up and um, I was taking a shower and the Lord began to speak to me again through some of these scriptures. So I really haven't had time to put this on PowerPoints and all my little teaching gadgets and stuff that I do. It's just going to come out of my heart into to your heart. Out of my heart into your heart. And Daniel, because he knows how to work that dad in the back, is going to put some stuff up back up here. But we've been talking about whose image are you? Whose image are you? Uh, and the Bible says we're made in God's image. Yes. And when you're born again, you're made in the image of Jesus. The Bible says that we are uh, to imitate Him as dear children. We're to act like Jesus, walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, touch like Jesus, heal like Jesus, deliver like Jesus. Everything that Jesus did, that's what we're supposed to do because that's who we are. We're made in His image. And you may not even realize it. But you have that likeness and that image on the inside of you. That is, when you get born again, there's something that comes into you. It's the Holy Ghost. And there's a new birth that happens. And the old worm gets into a cocoon. And then the cocoon hatches. And you fly off, no longer bound to the realms of earth. But soaring in the glory of God on the, on the wings and the breath of the Spirit. No longer bound to the dirt Amen. and the earth realms, but you're born again. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. And one translation says he's a new creature altogether. The old has gone and the new has come. There's something new inside of us. We, we, we get angry and we're tempted to hate someone, but then we can't. You, you just can't do it. Because there's something inside of you. That's right. And that something that's on the inside of you is God. Amen. And it's His nature. And His nature is love, for God is love. And so we can't live the same old life that we used to live. We can't say the same old words that we used to say. Because those words, when they come out of our mouth, they kind of catch in our spirit. They catch in our throat. They catch in our spirit and we go, oh, yeah, that's not the words that God... God wanted me to bless, but I cursed. And God, oh God, take this curse and turn it into a blessing. Take my mouth, as the, uh, uh, the prophet said, uh, to put a coal upon my, on my... Isaiah said, put a coal of fire on my tongue. And God put a coal of fire on Isaiah's tongue and purified his words. See, you can't purify your own words. But the Holy Ghost can purify your words if you'll get in line with his word and with his spirit. And when you get in line with who you are, you'll begin to be a man and a woman that speaks blessings when everyone else is speaking a curse. You're going to speak a blessing. And you have enough power to reverse their curses. Amen. One of us has enough power to reverse all the curses that they're speaking. So that's why I don't speak curses. I speak blessings. Because I have a great power inside of me. I have a power to bless. The Bible, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, But life and death are in the power of the tongue. We can speak life or we can speak death. We have the power of life. And the power of death. We have the power of blessing and the power of cursing. And cursing just hurt, you know, just hurts people. Hurts people. Wounds people. But we have the power to reverse the curse. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. Amen. 
And so we speak, we reverse the curse. Amen. That's our job. Bless the Lord. But we're in a battle. So as we're talking about being in the image of Christ and all of the different attributes of that that we have been studying about, I, I wanted to talk to you today about the fact that we're in a battle. Uh, God is trying to get you to see yourself the way He sees you in Christ, with Christ in you, with Christ living out of you and through you to the earth. And the devil has an image for you too. Satan has an image for you. So today we're going to we're going to talk about uh, made. Uh, in God's image, but the title of this is going to be Satan's image for you. See, Satan has an image for you. He wants you to look at yourself a certain way. He wants you to believe yourself a certain way. Amen. Hallelujah. Anything that God, anything that God has uh, done for you or has called you to do, you can be most assured that Satan is trying to block everything that's good in your life. And the Bible says in James 4, 7, I believe it's uh, 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The devil is a liar. And he tries to tell you that you're unworthy. He tries to tell you that you're uh, bound by drugs and alcohol and you're always going to be that way. But I've got news for you. There is recovery for you. Amen. There is deliverance for you. Yeah. He tries to tell you that your sexual orientation is a certain way. That God said your orientation was the way that he made you in creation. So, you know, our, our flesh may try to take us one direction, but we hold on to what God says that we are. We hold on to Him. And we don't condemn those that don't get it. Amen. You can't condemn those that don't get it. But you can know that there's a truth. God has for you His image. Male and female created He them. And it says He created them in His image. In Genesis 1.27, so God created man and in his own image. And in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Right? Well, I don't see any other pronouns in there. I, now you can believe in all your pronouns if you want to. I'm a them, I'm a they, I'm a him, shim, whatever. And that's okay. I don't have any condemnation for you. You believe anything you want, I'll love you right where you are. Amen. But God happens to tell us who we are. Our DNA comes from above. Yes. Our DNA does not come from the earth. Our DNA does not come from what the world is telling us. Our DNA comes from heaven. Hallelujah. Yes, I know you have natural DNA. And every, every day, I look in the mirror and comb my, bride, uh, comb my uh, beard and, and put a little spritz of water in my hair and go like that, and then I'm done. Because there's not enough up there to do anything with. And then I look at a picture of my dad, and it's, uh, it's just, I just, my, my dad, I look more and more like my dad every day. So that's a natural DNA. Amen. We have that, you know, you look like your mom or your dad or, you know, we have those attributes. But those are not the attributes that are the most powerful attributes that we have. Are you listening to me? Your attributes are from heaven. And the Bible says we're made in the image of God. Men are made in the image of God, and women are made in the image of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you know that God the Father has the masculine and the feminine in Him? 
the Bible says as a uh, as a mother careth for her child, so the Lord careth for you. Amen. And we see him all over that, that he is he is a father to us. So God has a nurturing side to him, which is the feminine, and then he has a masculine side to him, which is uh, nurturing as well, because the Bible says to bring up your children and nurture and admonition of the Lord. It's talking to the fathers in Ephesians chapter 5. So we've got that. But we also have the disciplinary side of God. And which means get it together or I'm going to spank you. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says that the Lord chasteneth at those whom he loves. Well, you know, I didn't let my kids get by with everything. Or my grandson. Amen. Hallelujah. One time I called the police on him and had him come take him to jail. And he respects me to this day for that because of boundaries and consequences. See? And God the Father says, uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there is a wage to your sin. But Jesus paid the debt. That's right. So if you'll accept him, the wage of your sin is paid, and you do not have to go to heaven. You get to go to heaven. Woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah. Hallelujah. However, if you broke a law on the earth realms, the police are going to take your butt and put it in jail. Amen. Where it needs to be for a little while until you learn a lesson. Amen. Amen. But all the time you're in there, God loves you. You know, I know when Zach was in jail, I would go see him. And uh, I'd go see him every Saturday. They wouldn't let you go in every day. I'd go see him every, every Saturday. And uh, one time I said, uh, your friends have got you in trouble. I said, uh, any of them been over here to see you? No, Grandpa. I said, you know why? Because I love you. And they used you. I love you and they used you. Sin will use you. Sin will use you and try to use you up. Sin will try to destroy you. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. For the grace of God. Hallelujah. Grace like rain falls down on me. Oh, we're, we serve such a merciful God. Even when you get a little discipline, you know you're loved. Even when you get in trouble, you know you're loved. Sometimes you need a spanking just so you'll know you're loved. Amen? Otherwise you wonder, man, I'm getting by with a lot. No, you ain't. <laughs> no, 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 you ain't. The devil's just trying to get, let you get by with enough stuff to well, he can go ahead and finish you off. Amen. But if you get caught and you get in trouble, sometimes that's the best place for you. Because that's when the mercies of God can sweep in to that jail cell. You know, I was thinking, our little Zachy, his, his mama passed away on our church parking lot. My adopted daughter died in this church parking lot a couple years ago and you know, she loved butterflies. Everything in her house was butterflies. And so she was coming into Sunday night service and she died on the church parking lot. And we went out there and they were trying to bring her back. And So I, I, I mentioned to you about the butterflies. That those of you that didn't know her very well, everything was a butterfly. Because 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and if anything be, anyone be in Christ, he's a new creature. That whole thing that I talked about, the... the the worm, the cocoon, and the butterfly. Hallelujah. Be a new, be a reborn. So there she is, and I looked over at my aunt, and I looked over at Nancy, and I said, Well, Mama, I said, uh, I'm not sure. They were trying to bring her back. They were trying to bring her back. They had the machine on her trying to bring her back, you know. I said, I'm not sure. We pray that God take her at the time that's best for her. Because she'd been through so much. 
so much trauma and she just couldn't make it through certain things. You know, sometimes people just can't get through things. The Bible says that a wounded spirit who can bear. And uh, so, anyway, this butterfly. I wish you'd have been there, Bethany. I wish you'd have seen it. This butterfly flew down while we were working on her, landed on her, and then flew up over the top of the church. And it, and it was gone. And I turned to Nancy and I said, Baby, she's gone. She's gone and she won't be back. And we had peace. We had peace. So I went to the jail to visit Zach. <clears throat> uh, I went at night. They let me in. And I said, uh, Zach, your mama, your mama's gone. And uh, he just broke down. He loved his mama. <laughs> But Zach broke down. He just broke down. And I said, well, I'm going to do my best to get you out for the funeral. And everybody told me, I talked to, I talked to police, I talked to a lot of different people in law enforcement and different things, and they said, that judge will not let him out for the funeral. He will not let him out. I said, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. And I, I wrote the judge. And the judge wrote me. They called me and they said, you can pick him up before the funeral. You can have him until that evening. And then you can bring him back. And we're putting him in your hands. So they put him in my hands. While we were there, talking about how God works in situations. Why am I telling you this? I'm not sure. But <clears throat> how God works in things. So there's that. He's in jail. He did, his mama just passed. One of the uh, other inmates, I will call them inmates, I don't know how you say it. But anyway, one of the inmates handed him a book and said, Zach, I think you need to read this book. Well, it was Ryan Sutton's book, <laughs> Help for the Hurting. Amen. And Zach loves Ryan Sutton. So Zach cried some more. And he read that whole book cover to cover. But God was working with him in all that. Yes. And I see that young man, how God brought him from rebellion and self-centeredness. And now he's got this little baby girl. And you know, you know who he thinks about? He thinks about not him, but he thinks about that baby girl. And that's what the love of God does. God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, when He came to earth to bear your sins on a cross, He was not thinking about Himself. And when He went to that garden, He said, God, I don't want to do this. I do not want to go to that cross. I don't want to do it. But you know what He did? He looked at the, he looked at the mirror in heaven. See, there's a mirror in heaven that Jesus looked at. There's a mirror in heaven that you can look at. And Jesus looked at that mirror in heaven. And he saw the love of God. And the love of God said, you get on that cross for those people. And he died for you. Amen. And he died for me. Because the selfishness did not control the Lord Jesus Christ. And selfishness will not control his followers. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to be controlled by the love of God. There's some beholding as in a mirror of the glory of the Lord. We're being transformed into that same image from glory to glory. Even as from the Lord, the Holy Spirit. When we look into a mirror, we should be seen. We look into the mirror of Jesus. Amen. What would Jesus do? Where would Jesus go? What would Jesus say? Hallelujah. He's a love God and we're love children of the love God. That's who we are. That's our identity. But Satan is in a tug of war against us with the Lord Jesus Christ for our soul. Amen. He's in that tug of war. But the battle's already won. 
you and I have to make a choice. Are we going to yield to Jesus? Or are we going to yield to the devil? In our image. I don't care what you feel like in your flesh. What God says we are is what we are. Amen. We're a child of the living God. We're full of the love of God. So I'm going to look at a little contrast for a minute. I'm going to look at a little contrast here. In Luke 22, verse 31. Luke 22, 31. Now, <clears throat> Jesus was talking to Simon Peter. The Apostle Peter. And um, he said, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. See, Satan desired to have every one of you. Every one of you, every one of you, just as much as the Lord Jesus, well, not just as much. But the, Satan desires to have you. Every one of you. So that he can sift you. Now, he wasn't talking to a non-believer. He was talking to Simon Peter, who was a believer. And he, do you know that the devil wants believers? He wants to control believers. He wants to control you with the works of the flesh and the sins of the flesh and the demonic powers of the earth. He wants to control you with anger and bitterness and hatred and all those things of the dark worlds. See, we're not of the dark worlds. We're of the bright kingdom. Hallelujah, the kingdom of Jesus. Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Sifted wheat brings a separation. And Satan wants to separate you from your image. That's what I want to get, get across to you this morning. One thing. Satan is trying to separate you from who you really are. He's trying to separate you from who you really are. And who you really are in Christ Jesus. Who we've been talking about for the last three months. You're a new creature in Christ. Amen. You're a walking image of Jesus. That's who we are. But the devil wants to convince you otherwise. He wants to sift you from that. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When thou art converted, but yeah, when you get your head on straight. That's what that means. Just tell me the Ken Strong version. <laughs> when you get your head on straight, you can help your brothers and sisters. Until then, you're just going to take confusion everywhere you go. Got a bunch of Christians out there, bless their darling hearts and stupid heads, that are bringing confusion to the body of Christ because they don't know who they are. Well, you're a new creature. Made in the image of the God who is love. If it doesn't fit in the category of love, it's not who you are. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, he says, and he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both to prison and to death. Well, it was his heart. He was fickle. Anybody ever been fickle? Yeah. Peter was fickle. He says he's ready. Oh, I cannot tell you how many people, how many times ago, I had somebody just tell me yesterday. But people tell me, well, now we're, Pastor, we're with you. We're with you. We're going to be with you. Huh. Well, they came to church one time, <laughs> one time, and then they weren't with me anymore. That's okay, I'm not, it doesn't bother me. But, you know, don't make any elaborate promises if you're not going to keep them. Just say what you mean to mean what you said. Amen. <laughs> and he said, I tell thee, Peter, now Jesus is saying, now Peter, I'm telling you something. <clears throat> Before the cock shall crow this day, three times you're going to deny me. See what the devil did? 
He desired to sift Peter to separate him from his faith. The devil wants to separate you from your faith. Don't let him. He wants to separate you from who you are. See, when Jesus went to Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, I don't want to do this, but I'll do whatever you say. Peter, when he got in trouble, what happened? He denied the Lord three times, even though he said he wouldn't. How many of us have done that? I know I have. Lord, I'll, I'll never do that again. I'll never make that mistake again. I'll never mess up in that way again. Well, your mind tells you that. Your spirit wants to. The spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. And then what happens? You end up slipping. Well, what, what, what did Jesus tell Peter after he denied him three times? Later, when he rose up from the grave, he embraced him, forgave him, and let it go. And that's what you and I need to do with each other and with ourselves. When we ask forgiveness, get up and move on. Don't let the devil heap his condemnation on you. Praise the Lord. I want to look at a, a shadow and a, and a contrast of Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, Ephesians 4, 26, it says, Be angry and sin not. <clears throat> uh, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. This word place is interesting in the Greek. The word place in the Greek means doorway, entryway, any kind of a window or path to get to. Don't give the devil, and I will say it this way, don't give the devil an inch or he'll take them off. Do not give the devil a little bit because if you do, he'll take more. Because that's the way he works. Well, I'm an alcoholic. I have struggled with alcohol, but I'm just going to just going to drink one. That's a lot from the good hell. Sorry to tell you, I've watched it for 50 years. I watched it in my childhood. You won't drink just one. The devil is telling you that you'll just drink one, but you won't. Because that grip is there. Well, I'm not confessing. I'm not going to confess that I'm alcoholic. Well, if you are, you are. And if you can't stop, then you need the help of God. And you can't do it on your own. I'll tell you that right now. You can only do it with the help of God. Hallelujah. So don't give the devil one drink. Amen? Or just one hit. Or just one snort. Ah, just one snort. Just a little lie. Just a little lie. <laughs> oh, you lying devil. The devil's done lying to you and you bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. That one line turns into a longer line and more lines. Come on. Do not give the devil an inch. Because he wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy from you. There's that battle going on in us. There's the nature of God in us that's wanting us to say no and resist. And then there's the nature of the flesh and some of you, you need hands laid on you to heal the brain chemistry in your brain. Because once that stuff gets a hold of you, you need a healing anointing. I mean, I'd anoint my head every day with oil if I had uh, done meth or something else for a while. Anoint your head say, in the name of Jesus, I call my brain healed. Amen. Let my brain be healed of this uh, addictive pull. It's a terrible pull. 
It's a terrible pull. But I have several in this room today that could stand up and tell you Jesus has set them free and he can set you free. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Amen, brother. He told my brother Bill in the back row there told me in the hospital room here just a few days ago. He was bound with that. Bless the Lord. And I am so proud to know you. I'm so proud of your life. Coming out of prison, coming out of bondage, coming out of darkness, sitting in this pew and coming to this altar this morning to make sure your salvation was secure. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Amen, give us the Lord a hand clap of praise. Bless the Lord. I'm telling you, there's a, there's a bunch more of you in here. There's a bunch more. I'm going to point you out, and since he raised his hand, I felt like I could tell him. There's a bunch more of you. It's the mercy of God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the mercy of God. But that battle going on in the inside of neither give place to the devil. Keep going. I'll never get through. Let him that sell steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to him that need to keep going. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it might minister grace to the hearers. There's two powers for your tongue. Corrupt, that ministers death, and grace, that ministers life. This scripture says that it's not our God to speak corrupt communication or death. But it's our job to speak grace to the hearers. I'm speaking grace to you today. Everything bad in your life can be turned around Amen. by the grace of God. Amen. Everything yes. bad in your life will be changed by the grace of God. If you will receive that grace. You must receive it. God will not force it on you. You must receive it. And sometimes you have to fight for it. Anything worth having is worth fighting for. So fight for it, people. Those of you that are struggling, I know some of you are struggling. And that's okay. Just keep struggling until you win. Keep fighting until you win. Hallelujah. Praise God, it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now here is the tug of war. Let all bitterness. How much bitterness? I didn't hear you. How much bitterness? Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor I could define each one of those from the Greek to you today. <laughs> Clamors, fussing and bickering. You need to quit that. Amen. And evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You know what malice is? Malice is I want you to get what you deserve. But I want mercy for me. <laughs> You stinking hypocrite. Come on now. I want, I want judgment for you and mercy for me. Mm -mm. No, it don't work that way. Put it away, Jesus said. Put away all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking and malice. Put it all away from you. That's the devil's side. That's the devil's side of the arm wrestling. But God's side is this. And be kind one to the other. See that man looking in the mirror, what's he seeing? What's he seeing? Jesus. He's seeing Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what we need to see. That's what we need to see. That's what we need to be. Hallelujah. Let all bitterness 
Let all that other stuff go. And now he tells us the God side. And be kind. One to the other. First verse I ever learned. First verse you ever learned. Ooh, bless the Lord. <laughs> be kind one to another. Tender heart. Put your hand on your heart. Close your eyes. Put your hand on your heart and close your eyes. Let me pray for you. God, take the, just take the stoniness out of every heart. Take the stoniness out of every one of our hearts. Take it out, take it out, Lord Jesus. Just say it out loud. I don't want the stoniness anymore. Take the stoniness away. Make my heart tender again. Lord, to my heart, bring back the springtime. Take away the cold and dark of sin. In Jesus' name. Be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Did you know that that's who God is? And did you know that's who He is in you? If you'll let Him be. There's a tenderness of heart that God is going to restore to some of you. That tenderness of heart. Hallelujah. In the Old Covenant, he tells us the promise, and I will take the stony heart out of them and give them a heart of flesh. I will write my law of love in their heart, and they shall no longer walk in the ways of the world. Hallelujah. That's the promise we have. Amen. That's the promise we have. <laughs> Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Let me tell some of you that are, have struggled and are struggling in this room. The greatest offender, and my brother in the back who leads 12 steps for many years, will attest to what I'm about to tell you is right. If I'm right, I want you to lift your hand and tell him in a minute that I am, okay? And if I'm not, just say, no, no, he's wrong. <laughs> the greatest offender against your addiction to suck you back into the darkness. The greatest offender is bitterness and unforgiveness. Am I right, brother? Can you give me a more accurate quote from the big book? It is an evil and corroding thread. The fabric of our existence is shot through with it. We have to be free of it. Amen. Evil and corroding thread. Evil and corroding thread. Has to be broken through. There's only one thing that can do that, people. It's the love of God. The love of God, God is the greatest force on planet Earth. And that is who you are made in the image of. And I have not given you an adequate teaching this morning, but I've given you all you need for now. Stand with me. Well, no, let's do the, the stand. Right in stand. Let me do the last verse, Ephesians 5 1. I want to finish with the very next chapter, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Bring that up in the Amplified. <coughs> therefore, be imitators of God. Copy Him. And follow his example. And as well beloved children imitate their father. Let me see it in the Passion Translation. TP something or whatever. I don't know what it is. There's another translation. Just give me another translation. I want to see it in all the translations. Be imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your father as his beloved. Sons and daughters. Do, do me another translation. Mm -hmm. Become then, therefore, followers of God as children, 
Be loved. Hallelujah. Be imitators of God as dearly loved children. I like the Amplified Version. It says copy Him, imitate Him, mimic Him. Whatever He is, is who I am. Somebody say, His seed lives in me. His DNA is in me. And I'm going to walk like Him, talk like Him, and live like Him. In Jesus' name. Father, we give ourselves to You that we would be the beloved children controlled by You. Controlled by that DNA from above. Dear Lord Jesus, we give ourselves to You as we leave this place. Let us be so full of You that when the devil tries to pull us into the image that is no longer us, we'll walk in the image of who we are in you and all God's children sin. Amen, amen, amen. I bless you. The Lord bless thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee. Be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance unto thee and give thee peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be blessed. I love you all. Come back at 5.30 or 3 o'clock for the soul winning. Love you. See you next Sunday.